and welcome to Talking Small Press Comics, episode 62 with Steve Keeter and me, Larned Justin. This is a very special episode because our guest is none other than Matt Fazell. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing fine, thank you. Good, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. And uh, we're going to find all about Matt Fazell, if you don't know. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah. Uh, I know that guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this isn't going to work with me in the hat because I have the headphone oh, thing going on. Yeah, oh, headphones. Yeah, oh, you guys, you guys look eminently cool. Eminently cool. We don't that work. Things, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, go ahead. Can you hear me? Something? Yeah, I can hear you. No. Uh, well, I. I don't know. Uh, let me. I'd like to hear Matt. Um, uh, Matt, say something real quick. You sound a little. Hi, boring. I'm Matt Fazell. I'm a creator okay? of the cynical yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Laid off superhero. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we can prove it because I have a lot of old zines and stuff. Um, Matt. Uh, well, what can I tell you? You know, you, you talk about a legend of small press, a true legend of small press. Uh, what does that say? <laughs> Amazing Cynical Man. I know what I wanted to ask you. The anniversary about. reprint of Cynical Man number one. Number oh, one. okay. Well, Steve yeah. had some, uh, was talking about some things in 1974. And I just wanted to know how old you were in 1974. Um, 16. 16 years old. At, my, when I was 16, I never even dreamed of drawing a comic book. No, wait. I was 21. Oh, were you 21? Yeah. I was 21, class of 73. Yeah, okay. That's just, all right. I so, know that Matt was born in 1955 because I looked it up on Wikipedia. Ah. And, that's, and that's one year before I was born. So, um, so I would have been 19 in 74, sorry. 1974. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, uh, well, just just because I, I just happened to come across this, um, this is uh, the Fandom Journal from Kevin Collier, and this one was, uh, well, look at this. It's Matt. There's a picture of me uh, with a string of Cynical Man T-shirts on a clothesline. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me oh, I should make Cynical Man T-shirts, so I got a can of spray paint and a big. That's how you did it. White t-shirts and a spray-painted oh. cynical man on t-shirts. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's amazing. What, what year was that? This is that was, this that was one of the Raleigh years. So that was after. after well, this is dated hmm? September 1985. Oh, this, this particular oh. is like Kevin Collier's age. We all know Kevin Collier. He was around before SPCE. He was publishing a. a uh, news and review zines. On the back yeah. cover of this, it shows Chicago 1985, which I was not at. That was a couple of years before I first attended. And you see this guy down here, the guy. Oh, oh yeah, I see him. Very handsome. Very, very handsome, handsome, young, profound. You can tell he's profound. He's got his hand on his face like that. And um, just a picture of some guys uh, at the Chicago Con 1985. I, uh, so, uh, well, that's, that's that. I had to come across that. I had to show that. Um, I had written, uh, you guys already know, I, I was, normally when we do an interview, I write a few really quick questions. You know, what were your influences? How did you get in small press? What's your latest public, this and that and everything. But when I, when I, I started writing a, an outline for this interview and I just got carried away and it's like, <laughs> It was like four pages because yeah. all these memories came rushing back. And uh, Matt inserted that. I have a notebook with some of my first um, stick figure comics in there that I didn't oh, yeah. high. And I'm going to switch to the tabletop camera. All right. Like so. Okay. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> this was. I was reading like newspaper comics, so this was my Charlie Brown, my Snoopy, my Peanuts paperback. Go catch a fly, <laughs> and I like 
did a bunch of um, four panel gags that were kind of like Snoopy or like um, Charlie Brown gags. Right? Yeah, yeah. I put like an intro and a foreword and then a content and it ended up after doing the whole page and the whole book full for a house ad and a pitch for <laughs> the other books in the series and a back cover with some blurbs on the back. So it, it was like when do you whole, when do you think that was done, Matt? When when did you do that? You know? This was like sixty eight. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. That's amazing. I would yeah. have never thought of doing anything like that in nineteen sixty eight, I tell you. <laughs> So would you say that Charles Schultz was one of your influences? Yes. I would say, yeah. yeah. Well, we in, in junior high and high school, me and my friend Ross Reedy, um, who actually did the um, uh, the first stick figure comics I ever saw, I, um, I started doing them too after seeing his. <laughs> He's the one that did this character. Adam Man by Ross. Adam Man. Adam Man, okay. And uh, he was funnier than I was. He was. He always had interesting characters. <laughs> and his craftsmanship was better. Mine were really sloppy. But then I started doing these, and they were just like all on one sheet of paper like that. But they went on for wow. page after page. They had letter columns. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Well, this looks this looks uh, quite a bit more sophisticated than the earlier the little uh, notebook that you were showing us. It looks like you were coming along. You're making really cool yeah, logos and stuff. Progressing, yeah. That's amazing. Uh -huh. It's amazing that you kept them all. It is amazing, and you know, um, <laughs> I didn't think this was unusual at the time, and I didn't realize until. I got this stuff out for the interview for the YouTube video. Squirrel Man. Mm -hmm. that the, I did so many of them. Look at that. Now, did you think you were going to reproduce them or did you just drew them? No. We had no idea that they would ever be reproduced. Yeah. We, we kind of, we like imagined that uh, we would be doing stick figure comics and they'd be out there on the newsstand along with Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but that's not kind of, that's not 14 and a half. That's kind of a prophecy because eventually yeah. they were out there on the stands yeah. in the comic shops and everywhere. Eventually your work and your stick figure work uh, was out yeah. there. Uh, is and, uh, it's amazing uh, how far you've come since those days, but you can see the you can see the 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 style already developing, and with those multi a lot of panels on one page, which is amazing how how many panels you can put on one page. And, yeah, I wasn't uh, into wasting paper. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve was mentioning uh, in his notes here in '74 that you were doing. Uh, comics, but they were not stick figures. They were regular figures. Yeah, they was doing full figure work back in I could show you some of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I did mention that um, you, you, with your, your first uh, small press experience, your first uh, was with Dynamite, right? Steve Shipley's Dynamite? Yes. The first time you were actually published uh, in that crude uh, ditto uh, method. I have a cover by you. This one is for Dynamite number six. Uh, let's see it has. Yeah. Dynamite number six, uh, June of 1974. That's sweet. Yeah. Uh, the that. Uh, Oracle agents. And, uh, is that the green one? Uh, if you think that uh, Matt only does stick figures, uh, you're wrong. <laughs> Look at that. That Very was nice. I was I was a freshman in college by then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I, I had, um, I've, after doing all those stick figure comics, I thought, you know, maybe there's something I could do in comic books. And I thought, like, I would, at the time, comics were Marvel, DC, yeah, Carlton, and Archie. Yeah. And we never dreamed of anything else. You know, there was that underground going on over there. There was National Lampoon. That was a big influence. Yeah. And, um, 
but there wasn't there was no like um alternate scene and until i subscribed to i saw um mark Avenier plugged um the comics buyer's guide in an issue of in a letter column in commandy so i subscribed to comics buyer's guide and commandy. sending off to people that were advertising these fanzines yeah yeah <laughs> here's a notebook where i recorded my contacts with uh from comics buyer's guide number 31 i sent off three bucks or a dollar to chuck robinson the second for comic number three my mentor <laughs> issue cbg number 32 there's steve keeter i sent him a quarter for home <laughs> i'm number one that's amazing you you ordered uh one of my comics back in 1973 74 one of the first things i ever did i mean yeah. I, I am utterly flattered <laughs> there's that the is awesome back. thanks for i got a letter from steve keeter <laughs> oh my gosh he sent the comic back saying oh sorry i couldn't use it. it's too long anyway but thanks also for the letter of comment uh, uh. That's great. Whether or not I'll use it depends on how long or short the letters page for OM number three is and how much space I have. So he was already working on OM number three then. Well, I'll be done. <laughs> and now he's well, working on that letter. <laughs> I'm working on OM number, darn, I'm losing track. Um, the yeah. 11 will be the next one. Oh. And Mantra number 13. But uh, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So there's the cover of Dynamite number one in faded purple dip. Yeah. Oh, there, I can there, say there something. Ditto, yeah. Ditto, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, our, we, that's all. That's what we had that was available to us. Uh, basically, teenage uh, small pressers. Uh, we didn't have a lot of funds, and we couldn't afford offset. Uh, right. You know, before that, people like Jerry Bales and Marv Wolfman and all these different uh, people in the '60s that published. They 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 did Mimeo, they did Ditto, they did Offset, but we couldn't afford Offset. <laughs> Although that cover there that you're showing uh, is an offset. Who did that cover? That was a nice oh, cover. Sirocco. Sirocco, Frank Sirocco, yeah. yeah. And this is my cover of Dynamite Number 1. Also, it's just it's faded out in those yeah, days. It, it looked okay. In fact, I'm partly responsible because I actually printed this particular issue on my spirit duplicator. Steve uh, Shipley sent me the Ditto Masters, and I, and I printed it. But I never had much luck with them. Mm -hmm. the ditto well, it's fairly readable that, that copy of that, that, he shown, though, that looks fantastic for those days for small press yeah, yeah. about the same yeah but yeah after a few disasters uh, uh, most of us uh experiment with ditto in the early days we had one disaster uh, disaster after another pages were bleeding through to the other side they were fading you couldn't read them so we switched to offset and eventually, as photocopy evolved, we, we switched to more quality of photocopy. There's the Green Man uh, by, is that Keith Tuxar? Or that's by Stephen Shipley? That's by Steve Shipley. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, pencils by Matt Fizel, so it's inked by Steve. He sent me the art on typing paper. He drew it in, no, he sent me the script, and I drew the, the art on typing paper. And um, I sent it to him, and he traced it all onto a ditto matter ditto master yeah and, and it still looks matter. good and that one reproduced very well yeah and that looks like your art i mean your art from the full figure art that i remember the full figure cartoony art you had a great cartoony style uh and i'm sure you still do but um this was uh the earlier stuff that, that i saw uh, i had a here's one there's larry uh, neighbor Oh, oh, oh yeah. Steve, Keeter. No, Steve Keeter drew that one. I remember that one. There's a character in there who looks like Larry Nybert, though. <laughs> <laughs> on the other page there, at the top on the left. Uh, but uh, yeah, I drew that one. Uh, right there at the top on the left, there's a guy with the, with the goatee. Looks kind of like Larry Nybert, so I can see why he, <laughs> why you said that. We had a blast. <laughs> we had a, here's though, Steve. You drew that? I drew that, yeah. Huh, nice. We had a blast uh, when Steve Shipley came up with Dynamite, and Matt awesome. had actually That's the Steve Keeter thing. <laughs> but uh, this one, 
This is a dynamite number nine with a it looks like a Larry Blake cover. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Larry Blake cover. Yeah. And uh, this one has look at look at Matt's uh, style. Look at his cartooning style at that time. This strip is the Green Man again in girl crazy. Weird. But look at that splash panel. Yeah, I mean, Robert just, Crumb influence there. <laughs> little Robert Crumb, a little uh, Will yeah, Asner, yeah. little, little Mister Natural, scraps of paper laying in the gutter <laughs> like that. I was reading the Warren reprints of the the Spirit sections. Oh, yeah. So that that was just a, that was just beautiful work. That was a collaboration with my friend um, Keith Tuxhorn. So we Keith had him Tuxhorn. write the story. And you guys, you and Keith did a lot of stories together. How, how did, um, what, was he somebody that lived near you and you just got together and started yeah, talking? Yeah, we were roommates about... in college. Oh, okay. Roommates. Yeah. Hmm. Boy, and he had, um, um, uh, he had different tastes in comics than I did. We, um, um, we talked a lot and, um, he was into DC Comics and um, Neil Adams and Danny O'Neill, and I was into Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and um, so it. Um, he exposed me to a lot of um, other comics than Marvel comics. Huh? Were you a Mad Magazine fan? I was. Um, I read a bunch of Mad Magazines when I was a kid, but I didn't collect them. Oh, okay. I did. <laughs> yeah. Larned is a mad, mad magazine fan. Yeah, that was my thing, Mad Magazine. Yeah. yeah. We even like Bad Hollywood, Magazine, which the guys. reboot. Yeah. Dan Burke's Dan Burke's Bad Magazine, which is uh, based oh, on Mad Magazine. Bad Magazine. Bad Magazine. First, <laughs> bad Magazine. If you haven't seen it, the first issue is it's almost like an issue of Mad Magazine. You swear yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the same. He did it all with AI. And uh, AI and plus his own artwork and everything. Oh. But that's a uh, can AI yeah, mad tell mega jokes? Hmm? Can AI tell jokes? Uh, bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they say it's coming along. It's it's not yeah. the same. AI. Uh, we did a interview with Dan and also with Tom Felrath, who's also been experimenting with uh, AI with his comics and stuff, and. I mean, the one thing about AI that it can't replicate, you can't, the, the soul, uh, whatever the inner essence of a human being, it's it's not the same. It's no. still a robot. It's still a robot. It doesn't have what that they, soul. What he, what he also said was you can't do two panels the same uh, and make, make the character look the same in two panels. You can do it, but the character will not look the same unless you work on it yourself. And that's what Dan Burke is good at. He can make it look like the first panel after, you know, but um, it, it, AI will not make it look the same. You can't, you can't do it. So it's a lot of work is what it is. <laughs> and coincidentally, Dan is the other person who ordered Om number one back in 1973 when it first came out. So you two guys <laughs> uh, you discovered me. You made me what I am today, and uh, <laughs> whatever that I is, you blaming uh, that on them? Yeah, <laughs> Not my it's, fault. it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> but Matt, but you uh, you kind of progressed because you worked for Disney for a while, didn't you? That's not small press. No, it's not. That was a big deal. I remember when you did that. Yeah, that about about a year or longer. Um, seven years. Oh my God, I did not know. 2001 to 2007. Wow, wow, I did not know that. Maybe I didn't really work for Disney. This is a surprise. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, a really kids book, it. right? Wasn't it, Matt? It was aimed at kids. Yeah, it was Disney Adventures magazine. It was a digest. Yes. Yeah. And it was for sale up by the checkout lane and the grocery stores. Yeah. Next to the oh, RT God. digests, and um, it was uh, it was edited by comics fans. They were into comics. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> it, it, it originally started out as uh, all comics. It was Disney Adventures. I think Heidi McDonald was the editor of it. Uh -huh. but by the time. <clears throat> By the time it got around to um, to me, it was the comics was just a section in the back. 
Uh, and there's a lot of illustrations and other comics like um, sprinkled throughout. And it was a lot of like lifestyle mag lifestyle articles for kids and Disney's um, um, yeah. number one, um, you know, demographic. So uh, there was a section of comics and ads for Disney stuff. And I was, I did the, a vertical comic that was um, next to the staff box in the very front. They had mm -hmm. a, a sweepstakes going there. They dropped the sweepstakes and they hired me to do a stick figure cartoon of the wacky adventures of the Disney adventure staff between issues. Was that a stick figure comic or? It was all you... stick figures. It was all stick it, figures. The more stick figures and dumb jokes I could pack into that little um, vertical panel next to the staff box, uh, the better. So I got paid magazine rates for that. It wasn't small press. And um, wow. I signed the contract that says Disney owns all of it. Oh, but, my I mean, God. Really? And you, can talk about, you can talk about AI and advancements and, uh, well, Neil Adams and things changing over the years in comics, but you went in the other direction. You went back to your beginnings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that, about how you started doing those stick figure comics? And yeah, because you did them and then uh, early, uh, like you showed us, and then kind of went to full figure, and then you must have went back to the stick figures at some point. I was always drawing stick figures. I would, okay. like, even when I was drawing the non-stick figure comics, the full figure comics, yeah. I would... I would write them out on uh, um, in the sketchbook first, and just use stick figures or um, uh, you know just plain simple geometric shapes mm -hmm. for the characters. And then I, I worked up the um, full figure art on the drawing board. Uh, okay. So I was always drawing stick figures, okay. and it came to a um, one day I was working in a record store. Let's DJ's. <clears throat> was that DJ's record store in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina? Nope, this was Wax Trees. Oh, in... School Kids. In fact, in Raleigh, they had a, it was called School Kids. DJ's was a bookstore. Uh, yeah. yeah. This was a used record store selling a lot of punk rock. Okay. And, uh, I was listening to Talking <laughs> Heads, <laughs> uh, The Clash, The Ramones, The oh, Sex yeah. Pistols. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love and... all those guys. I started a um, a series of comics on the back of a record store handout. Yeah, um, and it says not available comics. It, it already it, says I, not available. I said not available comics because working <laughs> in the used record store, I noticed the records that were in short supply, we could get more money for it. So um, the most valuable stuff was just the not available stuff, right? So in the 40s, they sold comics, quality comics, or world's finest comics. And in the 80s, we just called them not available comics. Wow. <laughs> Someday, That's all so comics funny. will be not available. Was, it was like um, some punk rock kids from the future came back in time. I don't know. So anyway, I, um, I was drawing these in my sketchbook. Mm -hmm. While I was, during, you know, between customers at the um, used record store, and I was photocopying them, and just going around and putting them on on, on telephone poles and vacant buildings, oh my gosh. In, in the it's neighborhood cool. around Wuxtries, it was like the punk rock right. uh, concert posters and not available comics stuck up there. It, it looks like he did these entirely in ink without any, it looks like he didn't even pencil, you just went directly, is that correct? Did you just- You know, I think I did. I, I had a ballpoint pen. This is yeah. really punk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally punk, but it not, looks really nice. It looks, that's a yeah. really nice inking right. style. Right. Even these years later. It's not available comics number three, and so, I was um, spending my time doing that. <clears throat> yeah. And I was getting to the point where I thought, um, you know, I'm I'm not having any trouble, uh, any fun doing these. Oh, there's one. Mm -hmm. 
1981 Clado the Barbarian. So I wasn't go. having any, tru any, tru any fun doing um, the more elaborate stuff. Your comics were getting fairly from the stuff you showed me here. Mainstream so comics. Yeah. Oh, and then there. What I go. need is a punk period. This is this turned up in my sketchbook. The Amazing Cynical Man. Uh -huh. to the rescue. Help, Cynical Man, save us. The fire is too hot. It's no use. It's not my fault. Hey! <laughs> so he was, he was like the Charlie Brown of. Is that uh, the first Cynical Man? That is the first Cynical Man in panels. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> he will show up. Oh, there's another one. This was actually later on an earlier page. Cynical mm -hmm. Man saves the kitty. Help! Meow! It's no use. Might as well give up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know it's still funny. Is. When I when finished the, the current Not Available Comics, I started Not Available Comics number 11. And <laughs> I, I turned Cynical Man into a street poster. Oh, okay. And this is filling out the earlier Cynical Man to the yeah. rescue, where there's a bank hold up and he ends up, you know, not getting to, to the scene of the crime in time and everybody gets killed. And so he says, it's been a lousy day. <laughs> I hate that when everybody gets killed. Yeah, that that ruins the day pretty much. And he ended up becoming a superhero of sorts with the Captain yeah. America type wings on the helmet. I got to ask you, uh, yeah. when when did you start sending the mouth past the uh, head round head? That was Cynical Man number five. Okay, <laughs> that's a trademark. Walt Rogers sent me a mini comic. Uh -huh. Just another eight-page wonder. And um, he was a printer. He actually printed his own mini-comics. And he wrote me a letter on the back of an uncut signature. And uh -huh. that's, that's what clued me into this is an eight-page book uh -huh. that you could make out of one sheet of paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I seem to remember that book. So that, that was actually distributed in small press, right? And that was printed? Yes. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, definitely remember that giant Godzilla foot <laughs> and the arc on the in the. I remember that well. Uh, and like I said, so I, through a series of several comics, number fourteen is the first thing. Uh -huh. Wow, that's so cool. I, I redrew the first couple chapters of the um, eight and a half by eleven Cynical Man into the Cynical Man mini comic. Mm hmm. And there's Mr. Spot, who later became Mr. Comics. Mr. Comics. And the first appearance of Dr. Pween. These all show oh, yeah, up before Cynical Man shows up. What's his name? Pween? Dr. What Dr. Pween. 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 Yeah, Pween. <laughs> <laughs> Great. He's still well, around, I guess. That's how we did that. Now, Cynical Man's face went through a little evolution. Uh-huh. There you see number there you four. Go. Yeah. We're hitting the it's edge of his face, but it's, it's staying starting, inside. Yeah. And there it is hitting the edge of his face. Yeah, it's close, but it's not, <laughs> it didn't extend past yet. <laughs> right. This is the story where he's out testing the flying tank. No. <laughs> Yeah, or they just, you know, like they, he stands underneath it and they drop it on him and, and so well, that worked pretty much 90%. <laughs> so he spends the rest of this story like all messed up. So <laughs> I was like making a jaggy um, yeah. face and the more <laughs> messed up I drew him, <laughs> the more messed up he got, the more that line went off the edge of the face. There it is. There it and, is. There it is. Yeah. So I realized I liked it like that. So that yeah, yeah. you been doing it. Yeah. Standard look. Yeah, it works. For some reason, it works. It just has yeah, uh, there he is. Uh, it goes right past the head. Yeah. Uh, there he is with Lizard Girl. This is, I guess, the most recent uh, Cynical Man comic right here. Uh, or one of the most recent. Number 16. Shocking. Yep, number 16. Shocking reboot issue. Oh, that's a really good one. <laughs> oh, this man kills Frank Miller. 
I have to read back through it. Uh, let me see. Uh, he killed Frank Miller in this. What what page was that? On? <laughs> the back page. <laughs> on the back page. Uh, That's where I wanted to tell a story. A reboot that like retells his origin over and over again. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Did you ever hear about the about the time I killed uh, Frank Miller and Mutants and Girls says uh, constantly. <laughs> yes, the uh, right there. Love it. <laughs> <He's killing him. laughs> and I got this. I was reading through this stuff over the last couple of days. You also mentioned Mr. Comics, and this cracked me up too. Oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Comics and the Hey Comics Kids. I guess there's a comic shop up there in uh, Hammer Track. Uh, no, in Brooklyn. Uh, in Brooklyn. It's in yeah, Brooklyn, New York. By Jason Mojica. Oh, okay. Oh. And uh, you did this uh, for those guys. Yep. And apparently this is a collection of a number of strips that you did. Uh, and you put them all in one volume and added color to it. And yeah. uh, look how cool this looks in color. Really cool. Cool. color. Yeah. Um, a couple of things I want to mention there. First of all, your inking style. You're, you know, you're, you're doing stick figures, but your inking style is quite good. You put a dark border around the character. Yeah. Um, other people, I guess, to express these other people don't have the border, but it is to express that they're smaller or thinner, or like there's a professor in here somewhere, and I noticed he didn't have the dark border around him. It's a big it's, figure, so it's a big outline. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when, it, when they right. when they're all a medium shot, then they get like a medium. Yeah. Line. It's still I like there's, there's a point seven and a point three five rapidograph. Uh, yeah, and then a B six yeah. speedball. <laughs> and I was I was I was pretty fascinated by this. A lot of it is is uh, I mean you can see reprints, and you go from one story to another. And also the characters they defy the conventions of comic books. They 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 go from panel to panel and then back to the previous panel, uh, in between the panels. And uh, was this um. Uh, it's sort of an instruction, like it's an instructional comic uh, for other people yep. who are just starting to create their own comics. It's, it's comics I mean. theory for kids. There uh, we go. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Comics was that Mr. Spot who got stomped on by Godzilla in yeah, right. number one back in 1980. He oh, was boy. flattened. He was squished <laughs> into the second dimension. And so that's where he lives. And there it is. It yeah. alludes to that, and it shows uh, us that. There it is, yeah. That's the flashback. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the modern comics are in color. The modern stories are in color, and the other yeah. ones are in black and white. Wow. Uh, I cracked well, up. Just back a, an old, a mini comic printed on a Xerox 9500. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I, it was yeah. so funny. You also made a movie I wanted to ask you about. We made a movie. Huh? There was a bunch of us that made that movie. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. I was wondering. I'll take all the blame. Everybody else. No, but how did play. you find an actor thin enough to play the stick figure of um, Cynical Man? He was, it's Jim Mackey, the guy who has written a bunch of Cynical Man jokes. Yeah, okay. And he's like one of the only, one of the few talented people I've met that can say, I've got a great idea for something you should draw and follow it with a great idea. I should, <laughs> I should really draw. So, <laughs> and that Larned really has, has, is part of that club too. Larned okay. has, has written a joke for me that, that ran uh, one of the Cynical Man newspaper weeklies. Yeah. You wrote the joke about the, um, um, uh, I lost my cell phone. Oh my! Oh, God. that's too bad. Uh, <laughs> no, the joke starts. I found my cell phone. Oh, great! So you can call me now. Well, but I lost my car. <laughs> it was in my car. I lost my cell phone. Where was it? It was in my car. Great! So now you can call me and ask me for a date. Oh, I lost my car. <laughs> that's Larned's joke. Well, we never, by that's why uh, I'm probably not doing many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Larned writes some of, some of the funniest comics out there. Larned, uh, he has his own. Uh, yep. 
I'm dropping stuff here, but he's got his, his own warped uh, sense of humor. That it's, it's on a par with anyone else's warped sense of humor. So, <laughs> yeah. Varna's like, what does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? <laughs> How long did it take you guys to do that movie? I mean, it looked like oh, a three tremendous. years. Three years. Yeah, I, I wrote the screenplay. It was yeah. a, a little film. I mean, it looked like we got a together. It really we made did. a bunch of shorts and, and entered them in well, um, uh, local film festivals. And we um, uh, we did we did one feature film called After the Blood Rush. It was about vampires. Oh and yeah. Then, uh, next, uh, the producer guy Aaron Trudgeon wanted to do a G-rated family picture, and so I said, "Let's do Cynical Man." Okay, write a screenplay. So I wrote a screenplay about Cynical Man uh -huh. at his first day at the Board of Superheroes. And there's a um, zombie and a bunch. Of, there's a Dr. Quint who's yeah. training a, a, a army of living dead zombies. And um, it's uh, fun from one end to the other. <laughs> who, played, who played Dr. Quint? Dr. Quint was Michael Marcus. Yeah. Oh, and no we kidding. Marcus at yeah, we know Michael. Yep. You know, we yeah. talked to him quite a bit. Uh, oh, year. that's perfect. I have to go back and check. I, I, I was looking at, uh, on your website, and it's like five dollars for the DVD. So I, I'm going to order it. You know, I, I, I when I discovered it, it was didn't have enough time before the interview. Yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely want to see that one. Michael Marcus for crying out loud. Yeah, that's hilarious. Send you one. Yeah. Don't send me money for it. I'll send you one. Just remind me to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we would love to have a copy of that, uh, Matt. Okay. Yeah. I'm Don't just post saying. it on YouTube. <laughs> Don't post <laughs> it on YouTube. Um, oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. No. <laughs> which, which brings me to my recent discovery, which is um, my DVD copy based on your VHS copy of the Chicago Comics Convention. Apparently, I copied it. I had the VHS uh of the Chicago Comics Convention 1988, uh, the video that you made, the VHS video, and I, a long time ago, I copied it, and I lost track of it, and I just found it recently, and I, I posted that on uh, my Classic Comics Man channel on YouTube, and also Larry, uh, Alan Freeman had a version of that, uh, which is interesting, because it's got pictures of all of us. There's 1988. And uh, there's a T.M. Maple there, who passed away a long time ago. Oh. Uh, this skinny, geeky guy here next to Jim Maine. Well, that's a Steve Oh, that's a big guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a geek. <laughs> and uh, especially I... back in those days. And then there's this intellectual-looking uh, uh, guy here, looking oh, uh, yeah. very bright and with a bright future ahead of him. And that's Matt, looking yeah. very much like he does today. He just didn't have the only hat there back in those yeah, days. Yeah, <laughs> Now, yeah, I did look at that, and I couldn't recognize anybody. I did recognize you, Matt, but I couldn't. Well, it's been so long. Those are the only two. I couldn't figure out who anybody else was. We were yeah. such kids. Yeah, I know. Yeah, a long I was, time like, ago. I was like 30 pounds less than I am now, just yeah. fresh-faced and nervous. Uh, uh, well, you know, you remember the the, con the, 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 the convention, the panel, that I was on in 1987. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just froze up, you know, I was young and you know, nervous. And anyway, I think I've come a long ways. Uh, I blame it on, on this this guy here. Lorna, Lorna uh, brought me into the model level, uh, modern uh, 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 days of professional broadcasting. Oh, yeah. Where now I'm, I'm a seasoned semi professional. If anybody's and, professional, uh, it's us. <laughs> especially, yeah. <laughs> so, this guy's a great influence on me, uh, and uh, so are you. I'm just pointing yeah. all over the place here. Wherever you guys are, you know. Yeah, he's down below. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's but Matt, uh, speaking of, of Matt, and uh, yeah, you can check those check those videos out, especially the, the Matt Fiesel version of those videos. There's two versions, two different edits, but Matt's has more in, uh there's more stuff in it, including an interview with a local TV station that they did with you in the late 80s uh, where they were asking about Cynical Man. And the guy says, he's actually making money drawing stick figures. And you look out and you have a, a, a word balloon that says, a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I crack up every time I see that. Um, so, But you did influence a lot of people. And um, 
you know, a lot of people, it was funny. First of all, you were, you pretty much spearheaded the entire mini comics revolution. Uh, everybody, I, I never made mini comics, but I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel against the rebels. I, I'm a, <laughs> but, uh, but Larna did and many other people did. And your comics influenced so many other people. Also the stick figure genre itself, um, which you brought into the, let's say the mainstream of small press, if that's not a, contradiction, um, a lot of people began making stick figure comics, but nobody else could do it the way that you do it. With such ingenuity, uh, such style, and you didn't just uh, draw crude things. I mean, the, you know, the, there's all the, the lines are straight and the inking is great and the stories are hilarious. Uh, so there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of cleverness in those stories. So, yeah. So did you realize that you were such an influence or do you realize it now that you influenced so many people and you never expected that? You know, I thought this was going to be a punk period. I was going to do four <laughs> issues of Cynical Man <laughs> and then yeah. like collect them into a uh, uh, not available king size annual number three and get back to doing um, um, Invasion of Earth and Arnie Arnold Space Cadet and mm -hmm. try and be a professional comic book artist or anchor and um, never put out another um, issue of Cynical Man ever again. But that's, uh, that's <laughs> these caught on. People liked yeah. them. And it was it was like so, somebody at the record store came in. I had this sitting on the counter marked 25 cents. And somebody picked it up and said, how much for the mini comic? And I said, oh, I'm 25 cents. How about a quarter? And so they gave me a quarter. <laughs> and I gave them the mini comic. And it was the first time I had ever made money selling my comics. Yeah. And um, I realized I was on to something. I was like, people liked it. Yeah. It was funny. People would like laugh out loud that I didn't know. Like total strangers was were reading my comic and, and I would see them laugh at it. And um, I was enjoying doing it, so yeah. I said, "No way, I'm going to keep this up." Yeah. <laughs> if, if I get a job as a, a, a hot Marvel artist or an anchor, then I'm going to keep doing um, my mini comics on the side, because. <laughs> well, you certainly could have. If someone like Fred, like Fred Hembeck, uh, could get I'm a job doing a professional job. comics, you're. Every bit as good as that, and probably better. I mean, quite honestly, I'm not, not I wanted to tell you, Fred. Clay Gertis Comics Wave. This is where everybody. He was a newsletter published by Clay Gertis. He was a photographer in San Francisco, and would um, go around take taking pictures of events. There's a picture of Jay Kennedy back in the day. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> what about? Did you send stuff to uh, Tim to Diana or? Schultz? Mm -hmm. So, um, and like anything that you sent him, he would put a plug for it in the newsletter. And so mm -hmm. like lots of undergrounders and um, people doing mini comics would send him their stuff. And here's Comics World number 149. There's a plug for wow. Matt Fazell has a mini comic out. Cynical Man is 15 cents and a stamp from him at Euclid Street, St. Louis. He has two other zines, Space <laughs> Cadet and Invasion of Earth, for yeah. 30 cents each. <laughs> so, right, right. There's, uh, I, I remember stuff like uh, Ant Boy that you did, which wasn't stick figure, but it was also very, very good back in those days. Uh, yeah. I can see where, yeah, you, know, like you can see where things were taking off. Everybody was talking about Matt. Everybody was talking about him and the stick figures, and uh, but. Again, it's it's not like it was. Kid, it's not just stick figures. You do it so well, and you tell such a good story. Uh, and you've already said that was one of the points that uh, that you 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 decided uh, you wanted to see how much uh, with all this full figure artwork. You wanted to see how many details you could take out of the panel or out of the story and still tell a good story with the most sim simplistic artwork. Um, but all you need is, is like some text and a face, just about. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was I like the idea that anybody. This was really pumped. This the 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 whole 
spirit of uh, uh, punk rock and the do-it-yourself ethos is like form a band, put out your own records. You don't have to go through a record company. Um, just do it yourself. So mm -hmm. you can do mini comics. People tell me they want to draw, but I can't draw like uh, Neil Adams. And I said, don't go, oh, just start, just draw stick figures. We should have 12 year olds drawing comics and have the comics pros swipe from them because all you need is a piece of paper and something that can make a mark on it. And you can draw comics. You can draw, if you can only draw stick figures, you can still draw. Cause that's right. the beauty of small press. That is the beauty of small press. So I wanted to do, I wanted to be like Chuck Berry and invent a um, a genre, a form of comics that anybody could do, and like make a bunch of them and send them out everywhere, and people would pick them up and be inspired to start doing their own comics. And, right. Um, that's what I was trying to do with this stuff. Yeah. yeah, both you and and uh, Larda was about to mention Tim Corrigan at SPCE. Yeah. You were both you were both doing the same thing. You were telling yeah. people you can do it in comics. Yeah, and so many people came into small press because of you guys. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and many of them are still here today, and it's just exploded. I came, and I came in because of Tim Corrigan. You know, I, I saw Tim Corrigan's uh, ever, uh, book. Referred to, and you remember Fact Sheet 5 at all? Yeah, that was a... Fact Sheet 5 was a listing of... Oh, there's Tim's. Yeah. SPCE, yeah. Yeah. Small yeah. yeah. This was number five. Yeah. 1986. Uh, yep. Wow. <laughs> That's a little... I, I still time. have a bunch of those. I still have a lot. Yeah, of I do too. Uh, yep. Maybe. What a madman. Yeah. <laughs> Tim was incredible because oh. he actually, he didn't cut and paste anything. He didn't have a computer. He no. actually typed all this stuff, did yeah. all those reviews. You talk about heart and soul and putting everything you got into something and uh, because of a love for a certain genre, for a certain media, or just for small press comics in general. And and it, it, it just, it really made a big impact. Um, he told me that he drew his comics uh, on a board in his lap while he watched TV. I can't imagine doing that. I saw him do it. I know he did it. He told me that's what he yeah. said. Doug Halverson. Yeah. Doug Halverson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fanboy. Fan that's fanboy. Oh. He has a head like, a, like the blades of a fan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doug was at that convention in 87 and 88, and he's in, he's in the video, too, if anybody wants to check that out again. Tim Corrigan. There, there he is. is. Yeah. Still yeah. miss that guy. Yeah. He yeah. was a great friend and a great friend of a yeah. lot of people, of all of us, you know, a great yeah. friend. He wanted, he, uh, he used to come visit me every winter because it was so cold in Rochester, New York, and he would come down and he would stay in Orlando. And, I'll uh, stay in with Steve. Yeah, everybody come on, come on down. And then remember the little yeah, one he did SPC. on slick paper? He had a little one he did on slick paper. It was Small Press yeah. Comics Explosion and Small Press Creative Explosion, I believe, yeah. is another one. Yeah, here's number 12. But with all that, he drew all kinds of comics at the same time. Oh, here it is. Number seven. <laughs> Looks like I has a color cover from here. The red one, yeah. This was a mass market, like it was like distributed right. comic shops and stuff. Mm. When he came, he came down, when he came down to visit, I took him around to a few of the comic shops, and he brought copies of SPCE, and he was talking to the owners, and he was saying uh, to get them to display it, and. Uh, he was saying, well, you might not make a lot of money off of this, uh, but it's, it's, it's not going to cost you. They gave him, gave him free copies, in other words, so they couldn't lose. So they put it up on the stands, uh, and I would go by like a week or two later to one of the comic shops, and they were still sitting there. I was like, I hope yeah. somebody buys these. But apparently people yeah. did, and other people have said they bought them off the stands, too. Uh, it wasn't a direct market publication. I don't, maybe it was for a little while. Maybe it was for a little while. But... Yeah, it was definitely because a lot of people got in just because they found copies of this and they didn't order it. They weren't expecting it, but there it was. 
and it mm-hmm. opened a whole new world. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're talking about influences and Matt being a great influence. Uh, <laughs> I did have something else I wanted to show off because uh, Steve Shipley did nine issues of Dynamite, and I did a little revival for two or three issues. And um, oh, there was another one that came along before that, after Dynamite disappeared. Matt Tuxorn and uh, Matt Tuxorn, <laughs> Keith Tuxorn and Matt Fizel uh, published this. Yeah. Fan, Fan thing. thing. It's virtually and, dynamite number 10. Yeah. We're all out of chronological, chronological order, and I totally abandoned the notes we made. We've just been talking, and you know, this is the way it should be, I guess. But uh, uh, Matt published this. Uh, he says something about, you know, he missed uh, dynamite, and he still had stories to tell. And that is the Green Man, uh, one of Matt's characters. Uh, Steve Shipley created the character, but Matt completely took it over. Again, there was a faded ditto, and this one's faded a lot, but uh, mm-hmm. everybody's getting phone calls. I can hear your phones. Your TV My phone's phone. been going off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine hasn't. But the last last video we did, a guy knocked on one of my roommates knocked on the door, and he went yeah. quarters to do his laundry right in the middle of the video. Oh, okay, here's some money. Uh, but this was one of my revival issues. But this Sweet. has a story. You remember that one? Yeah. That was Dynamite, what was it, number 10 or 11? I think it's number 11. Uh, featured in this landmark issue, The Green Man by Matt Fizel and Keith Tuxler. And this was a story that I never would have over. finished it without you. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, opportunity. It was an absolute honor. Uh, it starts out. I'm not going to show you the whole story, obviously. But uh, yeah. it starts out, the, the early pages of it has uh, Matt... Uh, Listen, look at that. Look at the four finger. And Matt's doing his own here. Can't hear you, Steve. Uh, well, that's the microphone yeah. problem with this. But Matt is doing his own inks on this here. Uh, can you hear this one okay? Yeah. So that's Matt's artwork. And on the next page. Where, uh, where's the panel with the tractor running into the combine? I mean, the, the semi truck running into the combine. Somebody truck running into the combine. I think it was facing that page you were holding up. Who's got the dog barking? You got me. Uh, oh, where? Oh, I don't have it here. Uh, did, was that page that you inked? I think I left it unfinished. Uh-huh. Because um, I, uh, he didn't finish it, I, and um, okay, edit that. Was, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get, maybe we'll get back to it. But uh, I, I took over the inks at one point. Wow. Uh, Matt, Matt didn't finish inking it. Like I inked this panel, <laughs> and I, I didn't want to. Matt is so good. I did not want to disappoint him. So I took my time. I remember I used different markers and um, uh, I finished uh, inking this unfinished story. And, you know, like I say, it was a great honor. And I guess that was the last uh, Green Man story. Um, but, oh, here's a combine. I see a combine here. Okay. Combine is on this page. Oh, the farmers have a. <laughs> They're coming up Main Street with a combine. And then, oh, no, here comes a semi truck <laughs> crashing right into it. <laughs> and then you didn't finish the next one? Huh. Um, and uh, I think, oh, Matt inked uh, part of that. I think Matt inked part of that page, and I inked the bottom part. I inked the actual uh, combine part at the bottom. But his, 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 I remember inking Matt that there were so many fine lines, there were so many details. Matt pulled, he really pulled out the stops on this story. <laughs> and of all the Green Man stories that I've seen, and not because I was involved, but just because it was a great story, I think Matt's art was <laughs> at, at, a, at a peak at this time, his full figure art. So there you go, the end. Well, I was going to ask you, Matt, what do you got oh, coming up? <laughs> Anything exciting coming up? After that, I said, I'm going back to stick figures. <laughs> yeah. 
or I'm going to get this, uh, the back of a record store handout and start drawing punk rock comics. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you got anything think, coming yeah. up you want to talk about? Anything new that you're working mm -hmm. on? I'm working on a book of stick figure storytelling. Okay. Start, it starts out as a cynical man um, story at the Board of Superheroes and goes from there. Oh, okay. Word man says, this issue, we're going to be breaking the fourth wall. Fourth wall? What's that? And we, we just like, take off. So it's um, more okay. comic theory. And uh, it'll be, it's, um, uh, it's laid out to be 28 pages. And, um, 28? That'd be nice. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, digest size or what? It'll be... I'm imagining it bigger than a mini comic. It'll be mini comic proportions, mm -hmm. but maybe kids book size. Oh, okay. All right. That's good. Something to look forward to. I, since seeing Mr. Comics in print, I, I'm really bit by the color book. I think I might. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. This one is yeah. great. Uh, I mean, I would suggest. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, is the mic working? Yep. But yeah. This this one is really outstanding. This is really one of the best Thank things you. I've seen from Matt. Uh, I think ever. Uh, the color really adds something, but the story is hilarious and it's so inventive. I would highly recommend this to anyone. Uh, Larda, if you you, could, you should place the uh, ordering info down below the video. Yeah. This one. Yeah. That'll be available uh, at www.cynicalman.com. Oh, and that okay. is a very cool uh, web page, I have to say. That is really a neat web page. Back cover. What program did you use to do the web page? Um, Adobe Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver? Dreamweaver. Oh, I, I don't think I ever heard of that. Hmm. Oh, Adobe uh, Dreamweaver. Yes. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Anyway, you should look at his web page because it's very cool. <laughs> right. Well, we are getting to the hour point. We usually try to keep it to an hour. Oh, no, I haven't started with the script yet. Wait a minute. Okay. I got to read all this. I got four pages. <laughs> <laughs> you got to thank me, Matt, for, Matt, for coming on. We really appreciate it. I'm going to show off Ant Boy. Okay. Do that. There you go. Ant Boy, two of two uh, comics. oil paintings on the cover. Oh, uh, my my only good. oil paintings in print. Okay. Are those reprints or is that the original Ant Boy? Uh, this is the original. Yeah. Like they they ran in uh, Captain Confederacy. Yeah. Thanks for that. And yeah, uh, I remember there were, there were collections of backup features, like little eight page stories. And those are available on stories. the web page. You can get those from the web page. Uh, yes, it's adults only. Oh, okay. Good thing you said that. We need Sorry, to, I was. We need um, to know that. <laughs> not thinking diamond uh, distribution distribution standards when I was drawing. <laughs> I'd have to go look. If I can't remember what was in those, it would be adults only. Now I have to go back and try to find my copy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't have any little kids here. I can get those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I was saying, we really appreciate you coming on, Matt. Really enjoyed it. And uh, looking forward to your new work, of course. And uh, uh, I will have his contact information in the description below so you guys can get some Matt Fazell stick figures. Thanks for having me on your show, Talking Small Press Comics. Thanks for coming on, Matt. We Thanks really appreciate it. Thank we really Great. appreciate it. And we will see everybody in the next episode. <laughs> Take it easy. Good night. Adios.